What's up guys? Today I want to talk about the new custom brush collection that Real Techniques just launched. I not only want to share my thoughts on them, review them, but also demo them, show you all the ways that I like to use them, and also compare them to existing Real Techniques brushes to kind of let you know if something you already have in your collection might do the same sort of thing. And then lastly, just kind of share my thoughts on them. Would I recommend them? Wouldn't I? Let's go ahead and get started. So the premise behind these brushes and why they are called custom brushes is that the shape and size of the brush head changes according to this little device, this little mechanism that they put in the brush handle. So you can see when it is fully up, you have this nice, big fluffy brush head. And then as you slowly pull it down, the brush head gets more dense, it gets smaller until finally it is fully retracted in the handle. And this isn't really a new concept. A lot of you guys might remember, I don't have any on hand to show you. So I'll just put a picture if I can find one, but there have definitely been brushes out there before, mostly marketed as more travel friendly brushes, I think, where they come in a tube that looks a little bit like a lipstick tube, I want to say. And then inside there's a metal tube that you can bring down to basically do what this does with this brush. So it makes it more of a travel friendly kind of brush. But the main difference between any of those that I had tried in the past and this new collection from Real Techniques is that the, the um, mechanism or the device in this handle that makes the brush go up and down actually locks into place at varying points to make sure that when you're using this brush, you don't have to like physically hold it and kind of alter the way you hold your brush to make sure it stays like that. This locks into place so that you can set it, you lock it in, and then you can go and use it. So at first when I saw these, I didn't think the idea was all that unique, but after having used them and understanding how this kind of sets them apart, I do think it's a really neat idea. There are three brushes that come in this collection. I'm going to talk about them in the order in which I would use to apply them. That way I can kind of show you the demos in a way that makes sense here in this video. So first starting off with the custom complexion brush. The brand says, or at least I'm just reading from the packaging, says that it's meant to be used with a tinted moisturizer, foundation, or concealer. So really this thing could tackle every step of your base routine. For a natural sheer finish, you would put the little dial up here on min so that the brush looks like this. It is kind of maximally fluffed out at the top. Then for what they call mid, even flawless skin, you bring the dial down to mid here, makes it slightly smaller, slightly more dense. And then for max or seamless full coverage, you bring it way down to this situation to where there's just a little bit poking out the top. And then with all of these brushes, you can fully bring them into the handle so that there is there are no bristles poking out. So just given the nature of these kinds of brushes, there are a lot of different ways that you can use them. But the way that I have found I like to use them is this. So I will put the complexion brush all the way up to well, mid, so that it's kind of fluffy, kind of dense, but not max coverage. And this is what I'll use to grab my foundation that I normally just pump on the back of my hand. I'll dip my brush in there and then I will dot it on my face where I want maximum coverage. Then from there, I will raise this up so it is at the min point on the handle or maximally fluffy. And this is what I will use to buff and blend my foundation out across my face. And maybe if I feel like it's buffing out a little bit too much to create coverage that's a little bit more sheer than I'm after, I will bring it back down to that midpoint and start kind of stippling on my face where I want more of that coverage. Then when it comes to concealer, I actually have two that I really liked using. And the first of which is my under eye concealer, my Beauty Bakery Insta Bake. I will dot that directly in my under eye area. And once again, with this brush at the midpoint, start stippling that in my under eye area to blend it out. And I have found that over the way I've done it in the past, which is basically just use the Real Techniques buffing brush for everything I'm talking about here now, I instead now get a brush that's slightly more dense so that I can still keep that coverage where I want it in my under eye area and yet blend it out the farther away I get so it's a more seamless natural looking blend. And then the other concealer that I've really started loving to use across the rest of my face specifically to cover blemishes that are a little bit more challenging to not only cover up um, but keep covered throughout the day, I have started going in with the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer. My shade is Medium One Custard, and this is where I love to use the custom complexion brush all the way down at the max point. I take that puppy all the way down, and then I actually go directly in the pot with the brush and stipple directly on any sort of problem areas I have, mostly breakouts. And it gives such full coverage that is still very blendable. I'll either just kind of stipple out from there, or I'll take the brush up to that midpoint again, and that way I get a little bit more of a natural sheer blend the farther out I go away 
from my blemishes, but I really love how this brush, this one brush kind of gives me everything I need to blend three different types of coverages that I like all across my face. Like I mentioned before using this, I would use just the regular old buffing brush. Here you can see by comparison, the custom complexion brush is similar to it when it's all the way up at the minimum point. The buffing brush is a little bit uh, fluffier, a little bit more dense, I would say, than the custom complexion brush. But again, the custom brush lets you alter all of those things just by playing with this little thing in the handle. By comparison, in the past, I would just use the buffing brush for all of those things. And I didn't hate it, like it definitely worked for me. But now having used the custom complexion brush for all of this, I see that, you know, I really didn't love how much the buffing brush was really buffing out the concealer in my under eye area, or how it wouldn't quite pack on enough product in the places where I wanted to pack on more coverage for my blemishes. And now this custom complexion brush kind of does it all in one. Next up is the custom contour brush. Real Technique says to use this with powder, cream bronzer, or contouring makeup. You can see here at its min point, it is pretty fluffy, has a slight angle to it. And it says that the min point is for an all over warm glow. So for like large, you know, large scale bronzing or bronze touring you want to do. Then you take it down to the midpoint. You can see the Brussels, br Brussels? Brush? bristles get quite a bit more dense and it says this is meant to be used to frame along the jawline and forehead and then when you take it all the way down to that max point it's for sculpting the hollows of the cheekbones and the way that I have really found I like to use this it's actually kind of perfect for what I was already doing in my routine because I think this is great for cream product and I really love using the Huda Beauty Tantor. So what I do is I take it all the way down to that max point to really build up the contour I wanna use. I'll dip into my Huda Beauty and I'll run that through the points where I wanna contour along my forehead, along my jawline, and then I will bring it up to the mid point for this brush. And that's when I'll start buffing and blending it out where I want to. And it just gives a really nice seamless blend, but still keeps it, you know, deepest where I directly apply applied that with the more densely packed brush. And then on days when you're feeling like extra extra, you could take it all the way up to that min so it's at its most fluffy. And even after you've done a cream contour or just any kind of regular contour, go in with a warmer, more bronzy powder and set that contour just to give your face a little bit of an extra all over warm glow. Um, I am more of a minimalist, I guess, in that way in my makeup collection. So I haven't done that, but I could totally see doing that just with the versatility you have in this brush. And in terms of comparison, I don't really have any Real Techniques brushes that are close to the custom contour brush, the, but I have used the Expert Face Brush from Real Techniques to do the exact same job using that Huda Beauty Tantor. I would say the major difference is though, this is a fixed width, so you're never going to get a more precise contour than this, and likewise you're never going to get anything fluffier than this to help buff and blend that out. So I find that this spreads things more uniformly, like it's dense where you apply it, and then it's equally as dense as you try and buff it out. Whereas using the custom contour brush allows you to play a little bit with how you, you blend that out. Kind of a similar story with the complexion brush where just playing with the shape and density of that brush head gives you a ton more control with how and where you blend your products. And last up, I have the custom cheek brush. Real Technique says this is meant to be used with powder and cream blush or highlighter. The settings are min, which is it's at right now. This is for a translucent kiss of color. Uh, take it down to the midpoint. This is meant for a natural flushed blush right here. And then if you take it all the way down to max like that, there's just like this little kind of dome sticking out. Um, this is for a pop of color on the apples of the cheeks. The way I like to use this is if I'm using like a super pigmented blush, cream or powder, I will use this all the way at the min point because I don't want to overdo the pigment. Say something, it's like, you know, my It Cosmetics Vitality Fleet cheek flush in apple. Like this is a very bold colored blush. And so I want to be able to kind of layer it and build that color so I don't overdo it all at once. That's when I will go in with this fluffiest minimum kind of version of this. But if I am using something a little bit less pigmented that I really can afford to layer on, at, like kind of like the blush that I'm wearing today, which is the Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Chic Swish and Pop Blusher in the shade Ecstasy, you can see this is quite a bit paler. And so I am less afraid to take this down to a more densely packed brush, get on in there to pick up a lot of pigment and then pat that on my cheeks. Then I will go in, really get that brush nice and fluffy and blend it out just to keep it more natural looking. So 
I more so use those two settings for the different kinds of blushes I have and the different coverages I want from those blushes um, than the max setting, taking it all the way down to where it's the tiniest, most narrow version of this brush. This is what I like to use for highlight, powder highlight, cream highlight. I like a more in your face kind of glowy, glowy highlight. And so this I find is perfect for really getting a more precise application up here in the cheekbones. And then if I find I've overdone it with the density of the product, I just click this right back up and I'll go in and disperse it kind of like that. And the custom cheek brush is actually similar to two different brushes from Real Techniques. Naturally, the first one, when it's at its fluffiest, it is pretty similar to the blush brush. It's a little bit smaller, a little bit less fluffy here on the end, but still gives you a very similar application. And you can actually probably use this for bronzer, kind of like I have the blush brush in the past. This has generally been a major multitasker for me because it has that tapered edge. Yes, I'll go in and pat blush on, but I will also go back and work that in the hollows of my cheeks and my temples for kind of an all over bronze. I think you could totally do the same thing with this brush. Um, then as you take it further down, I would say to probably the midpoint, um, it's pretty close to the contour brush from Real Techniques as well. And this is actually one that I tend to prefer for highlight and contour as well. So again, you could just get so many different uses out of this shape and kind of brush. There isn't really a brush that I know of from Real Techniques that is quite like that. The only other one, I have this one, which is the setting brush, but this is way more dense. The custom uh, cheek brush is way more dense than the setting brush. So I would say that this is a relatively unique brush shape for the brand, but let me know if you, you have something that I don't in the uh, comment section below. Overall, I really like these brushes. Like I really like the concept behind them and I have personally seen them have a ton of different uses in my makeup collection. Like I could, but for the eyes, I could do every step of my makeup routine with just these three brushes and have more control and an easier time applying my products in just using these three brushes. The one thing that I really don't love about these is the handles. Unfortunately, I think they feel a little bit cheaply made. And so sometimes I struggle, like they stick trying to get them up and down. I'll have to push really hard in on these buttons to get them to go up and down. They don't always lock into place. So sometimes I do say, you know, I wanna set this on the midpoint. It won't click into place. Or if it does click into place, I press too hard when I'm, which isn't really all that hard when I'm doing makeup. And I'll notice the brush kind of going slowly down. Like it just, it feels like the handle components could have been a a little bit more sturdy to really make sure that wherever you put that thing, it's gonna stay right there. And then also it, it's not gonna take a whole lot to move the brush up and down. One thing that I will be really interested to see with long-term use of these, because at this point I've only had them for a little over a week to have been using them really regularly. Um, I don't know how they stand up to cleaning yet. I just don't know how this handle is going to stand up to long-term wear and tear or just everyday use, let alone throwing them in a bag to like go travel just wear and tear from everyday use of going up and down, up and down as I do my makeup day to day. I just wonder how much of that they will withstand before they kind of start breaking or wearing down and things like that just because of how they are already functioning for me. So that's the only downside I see right now. It currently is not going to stop me from continuing to use these regularly in my everyday makeup collection, but I do bring it up just because it is a major piece of the way these brushes work. So in the event that you don't love that that's how they operate, you find you have issues with them and you just would prefer to use multiple brushes rather than struggle with the one, I just thought it was important to mention. So that is everything I have to say about this collection of brushes. I really hope it was useful, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And besides that, thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and I will catch you in the next video. Bye guys.